tribe, how you guys doing? This is Life After Lockup season, what season we on, child? Season three, episode 30. Y'all, this is the show that never ends. How the fuck we on 30 episodes? Moving on. Anyway. So, we start this episode off, we have, um, Mr. Bonnie and Clyde telling sister-in-law, you know, the sister-in-law moving out, Tara moving out, and, um, you know, she still doesn't believe that she has to actually leave. Like, she still is like, I know he doesn't want me here because he doesn't want me to tell Chris Christiana what's been going on. And he even goes so far as to tell her that he don't want her coming by the house once Christiana gets out because I guess he don't want her there as any type of, like, bad influence. I'm like... First of all, the phones still work, sir. The phones still work. Second of all, I get it that she can't be in the house. And I understand what he's saying. He's saying, listen, if we are in the same room together, Krista, Krista Nia is going to know it. She's going to feel it. She's going to have that women's intuition and that sixth sense. But my thing is, oh, well, you made that bed lie in it. Because I don't believe that y'all didn't sleep together. I believe that y'all been getting it in on a regular basis. I believe that, your, that her mama know it. And... She probably uncomfortable with it, but she, you know, she ain't trying to screw up what she got going on. Because remember, she living there good, too. So, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Anyway, we'll get to, we'll, um, we'll get to the, we'll, this, we'll get to the rest of that. Then we have, um, Sean and Destiny. Listen. Destiny told Sean, she did say you were a trick. I heard it right. She said you were a trick. Um, and basically she tells him, listen, it is over. You lied to me about being, uh, about how many kids you had. You lied to me about how old you were. You lied to me about talking to your baby mama. Now, it does, she brought up a couple of things that we didn't necessarily see on camera. So it does seem like she caught him lying to her about talking to the baby mom more than she felt like they needed to be communicating. Now, again, I still feel the same way I feel. They got 20 kids together. You can't tell that man how often he can talk to his wife. They got 20 kids together. You just don't know what's going on with the kids at any given time. But I do understand there's a level of frustration there. But I, Destiny, you wrong all day long. I can't give you nothing. That's the closest I can give you to something. She ends up telling him it's over. She throws the ring at him. And I guess when she threw the ring at him, something clicked. Something clicked. He said, wow. She was just using me all along. I was just I was just a dummy, dumb, a dumb trick to her. Yeah, pretty much what everybody have been telling you all along, all along, all along. So then he decides, well, you know, the credit card is maxed out, so I'm just going to cancel that, but I'm going to get my car back. Sir, I know you got a key to that car. He follows her back to the sister's house. Check. Fine, you need to know. Well, no, he uses the address that he got off of the credit card when she got that pizza delivered. Fine. Check. You want to you want to confirm that the car is there? Check. Now he's calling to get the car towed. Why are you calling to get the car towed, sir? See, that's what I would have done. You got a rental car. That's a rental car you're driving because you flew there. Sir? I would have took that rental car back. I would have Ubered my happy ass over to that address. I would have got in that car with those keys that belonged to me. And I would have drove that car right on back to LA. I mean, to Las Vegas. That's what I would have done. I don't care if the trip is a two-day trip. I don't give a damn. I would have drove right on along. Why are you making this complicated, Sean? Where are you getting it told to, Sean? Why are you getting a tow? You're paying money for a tow where it would be a lot cheaper for you to just take the car. Anyway, whatever. Um, then we have um, Lacey, her dad, and John and this whole situation. So she confronts her dad. She was like, why did you tell him, you know, I, I thought that, you know, like, why would you tell um, Shane what that John is out of jail? Like, why would you tell him? And Dad was like, listen, I'm sorry if you feel like I betrayed you. You know, I, you know I'm sorry to hear that. I apologize. He said, but listen, at the end of the day, 
I don't know why you even entertain it, John. He's never been any good to you. He's never been any good for you. I like Shane. He's really doing the right thing. He's really trying to be there for you. Like, let's go. Um, she accepts his apology. Later on, her dad goes to confront John. And basically, the dad is trying to goad him into hitting him so that he can go back to jail. Come on and hit me. Come on and hit me. Come on and hit me. And he was like, I'm like, I really want to hit him so bad. Like, I really want to knock him the fuck out. But I know that I'm going to end up back in jail if I hit him. I know this is going to land me in jail if I put my hands on him. So what I'm not going to do is put my hands on him because I already know where this is going to put me if I put my hands on him. He says, listen, all I want to know is one thing. Did Lacey call the police on me and get me arrested? And the father was like, of course she did. Yes, yes, she called the police on you. This is what I'm going to say. Why are you listening to her daddy? I don't know whether the girl called the police or not. But he is certainly not an impartial witness. Clearly he don't like you. Clearly he wants you to stay away from his daughter. Clearly he really wants you back in jail. So why would you listen to what he has to say? Because he has every incentive to lie to you. I don't understand why you're listening to him. Anyway. Puppy and Amber. Listen, this is the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my life. So I guess it's Clint. Clint. This whole adoption situation for the scheme, first of all, the fact that y'all are talking about the scam all on TV like it ain't illegal is just ridiculous. But they go to see a lawyer to find out about this adoption. Is the adoption real? How can they get the adoption switched? How did, what did, how did he even get it done? Well, what we find out is, yes, it's real, it's real paperwork, but Puppy claims she never signed anything. So they're saying that the, the signature has been forged. Because she swears up and down she never signed anything. Now, I don't know whether Puppy signed anything or not, child. I don't know. But she swears up and down she didn't sign nothing and that they forced her signature. So, the lawyer says, well, listen, the way this paperwork reads, you are his beneficiary. If something happens to him, you get everything that he has. If he has no other children or whatever, you inherit basically everything he has. So, of course, Puppy is like, oh, wait a minute, really? She was like, so we can just offer him and get it? Now, first of all, again, you probably shouldn't be joking about killing somebody, especially when you have a motive. That's probably just not the conversation you should be having on camera in front of a lawyer and witnesses. I'm just saying. God forbid that man end up dead. Exhibit number one, your honor. Like, puppy, really? So they leave there. The lawyer says, well, listen, I can get this whole thing reversed, but it's going to be about $15,000. And of course, Puppy's like, $15,000? Like, the hell? So they leave there, and they're out eating. And Amber is like, listen, I just don't want no parts of this. Like, I want, I want to get as far away from this situation as I can. Like, I don't want no parts of him. I don't want no parts of this. I just want to move on from it. Forget he, forget he ever existed and be done with it. But, of course, Puppy want to run game. Puppy want to run a scam. And, you know, she wants to blackmail him. And Amber's like, listen, I don't want no parts of this because I don't want to be anywhere near anything that's going to put me back in jail. Like, I am serious about not going back to jail. I'm not even playing this game. I don't want to play this game. I ain't trying to play this game. Okay? Um, And Clint, so she ends up calling Clint. And Clint tells her, because I think Clint either feels like someone's listening or it's for the show or whatever. And he's like, listen, don't call me no more. You read the paperwork. You do the research. You figure out what's what and, and who's who. But don't call me no more. I don't want I don't want to have nothing to do with this no more. Um, and he ends up hanging up on her. So, Lord, we see what ends up happening. All right. Brittany and Marcelino. They are in Alaska, honey. They, well, we left off last week with the, the grandmother talking to her mom. And basically, her, her, the grandmother was like, listen. I am so sorry you had a hard life, but baby, I didn't put that pipe in your mouth. I didn't put that beer in your mouth, and I didn't have nothing to do with your life being screwed up. And so the mom is like, you know what? I can't do this. Like, this isn't go this isn't helping me, and she's never going to admit that she had anything to do with this. So I don't want I don't want to have nothing to do with this. I don't know. I don't want to have nothing to do with this. So, um, 
Brittany, you know, you know, Brittany is like, Mom, don't worry about it. Like, you you did this for you, not for her. Like, she, she may never admit that she know, knows what happened to you and that she was complicit in you being violated as a child and, and all of that. But this was for you. This was for you to get closure, not for her, you know. So, Marcelino is like, listen, I don't want to kick up, you know, I don't want to kick nobody while they down. But the reality is this could go left or right. Like, this could go positively. This could go negatively. This could go left. This could go right. And so, I'm not quite sure where it is right now. But it, it very well could go, not go the way we want it to go. And so, I'm still keeping a really good eye out, you know, and all of that. So, the cabin that they're staying in belongs to Brittany's stepdad. And, um, the mother is there, and the mother did not know that the dad was coming through. They were married, and then, of course, um, they ended up getting divorced because he got clean and sober. The mother wasn't ready to get clean and sober, and, of course, you know, one person that's sober, one person that's still dibbling drugs and alcohol, that ain't never gonna be a good mix. And so they separated. And, um, so he gets there, and, of course, he didn't know that the mom was there. He feels a little blindsided. He's there with his new wife, you know, and he feels a little blindsided about the whole thing because he didn't know. Now, the family is dressed in family camouflage, honey, because they about to go hunting. And Marcelino was like, yeah, we're not playing no games up here in Alaska, okay? Because I don't, I, I, listen, I ain't used to being in the woods. This ain't my get up. But it was cute. They had real cute little, little um, camouflage matching family outfits. They looked really cute. So, Brittany, Brittany's dad takes her outside and he's like, listen... What are you doing? And, of course, she explains that, you know, I'm her only hope. I'm her only, you know, I'm the only one for her. You know, if nobody else is there for her, if I'm not there for her and everyone else has abandoned her, then, you know, I'm the only one that can help her. And he was like, listen, she is not your concern. She is not your burden. She is not your concern. You can't help her. Stop it. She said, I get it, Dad, you know, but this is it. If this doesn't work, then I'm done. And he's just giving her that look like, girl. You know, but he's telling her, like, you can't do this for her. Like, the same thing Marcelino's been trying to tell her. And Brittany knows, but it's her mom, and it's hard. It's, it's hard. People become enablers not because they want to become enablers, but because they don't know how to not be enablers. All right, Sarah and Michael. I ain't spending a whole lot of time on Sarah and Michael. Sarah's upset because Malcolm, you know, left her, you know, left her at the restaurant. And Sarah acts like she don't understand why Malcolm has a problem talking about some people who come in my life are just going to have to understand that Michael is a part of my life. Listen, Michael can be a part of your life without Michael being a part of your life. He is going to always be the father of your children. Ain't nobody talking about that. But Michael had a perfectly good hotel room and a perfectly good um, rental car that he had stolen. That's another conversation for another day. But... He was perfectly fine where he was. He could come and see them kids every day if he wanted to. He could spend time with those kids every day if he wanted to. You invited that man to stay at your house. Knowing good and damn well, that probably ain't the best idea. Yes, I know that technically y'all are still married. But he been out here cheating with every Tom, Dick, Carrie, well, Sarah Jane, Tootie, and LaQuisha all across the United States, okay? So... You, he, because he tried to throw it on her, talking about something. So you've been cheating on me? Yeah, you are. You cheating on me. Michael, stop playing games. And Sarah, stop letting him. Stop letting him. You, Michael being a part of your life to every man you date is absolutely a legitimate situation. Michael living under the same roof as you is a problem. And Malcolm, I don't think anybody, Malcolm or anybody else would be okay with it. I mean, that's just the reality. Won't nobody else be okay with that either. Like, come on. Stop playing. Anyway, y'all, that was this week's episode. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in the comments. Peace.